In this installment of How to Read a Birth Chart, we're going to practice using the two all-important rules of context and resonance. Let's just quickly review part one. We talked about the most important principle of reading a chart being setting the right context for your interpretation and how there's higher and lower priorities amongst the symbols in a birth chart. And the higher priority items set the context for the lower priority items. This is not a sitar, it's a vena, but the sitar is a really interesting example for reading a birth chart because it has those strings underneath that you don't actually play. But they're tuned in such a way that when a certain note happens up here, then it makes the strings underneath vibrate. So the contextual things of a chart are like those strings that are underneath. There's a certain note on the fretboard that when you play it, the strings underneath go and the other notes, they don't really go so much. And then the same way when you have your chart tuned a certain way by the ascendant and the other background factors, then when there's a certain interpretation that comes up in the detailed part of the chart, it really comes out strongly because it's in tune with the main background of the chart. But if there's another interpretation somewhere else that's out of tune, out of resonance with the main background of the chart, then it doesn't come out very loudly. You, don't, you shouldn't give it that much focus. Now let's see a practical example of how to do this. The first place to look is the Ascendant Nakshatra. It's the single most powerful determinant of the background nature of a chart. It's the tuner of the sitar's bottom strings. In my case, I was born when Uttarashada was rising. So Uttarashada is like the strings underneath the sitar fretboard for my chart. It's the background context, or it's like the palette from which the painter paints. So here's the way I present the essential information about the nakshatra in my birth chart reading, which is called a guided tour of yourself for the co complete birth chart analysis. You can get a copy of this for your own chart from my website at vicdecara.com slash r2. So first thing it shows you is what the name means. Udrashada. Ashada means the fulfilling of desires. In other words, achieving, achieving a goal, achieving a victory. And Uttara means later on. So it's what happens after achieving a victory. You have to consolidate power and maintain your success. So it's a Dhruva nakshatra. That's the other thing to consider about your nakshatras. Consider the name, understand what the name means. Ask about the type. Is it Dhruva? Is it Tikshna? Is it Ugra? Here the report is reminding me that this is an enduring nakshatra, a dhruva nakshatra. So put this into your mind. Put these key elements into your mind about your ascending nakshatra. Okay, it's about long-term victory or after victory. The symbol is a standing elephant. The elephant is very royal. It's in control. It's also very, usually, very calm. Purvashada elephant is not as calm. Uttarashada elephant is standing still. It's calm. But he's very powerful, royal. He's royal, like, like a lion. The divinity for this nakshatra is Vishwadeva, all the, all the gods. Or it also means Vishnu, the god, the divinity, who is the substance of reality itself, and therefore is everything and everyone and every, ev is everywhere. So on your own, you would be able to put these, these four points together to get some meaning, some more concrete meaning out of it. But in the report, I, I do that for you. I give you some keywords, like the keywords for Uttarashadra, unchallengeable, undefeatable, intense, and all-consuming. And then I give a little text about it. Uttarashadra signifies great power as a result of incorporating diverse assets and talents. That's the key to Uttarashadra, Vishwadeva. The result of incorporating diverse Vishva assets and talents gives you Ashada, victory, which is Dhruva, enduring. So it signifies fortified determination, strength, and intensity. Fortified strength, fortified intensity, fortified determination, long-term. 
and the ability to pull together many divergent resources and make them work together for a common purpose. Its intensity may indicate obsession, and its unchallengeable nature may indicate stubbornness or an attitude of superiority. When you've got this for your own nakshatra, then you have your mental space. In your mental space, you have a picture of your ascendant nakshatra. This is also very important to do if you're going to read a birth chart. You have to clean your mind out, clean the front of your mind out, clear it from thoughts so you have space there, and then you're going to put in that space these various symbol symbols of meaning. And the first thing that you should put in your clean, clean mental space is the meaning of the ascendant nakshatra. Can you tell something about somebody by just knowing their ascendant nakshatra? To be honest, you'll be accurate maybe 50 or 40 percent of the time if you try to give a reading to a person just based on their nakshatra alone. Because if, just think about this nakshatra, there's so many ways it could go. Is it going to go towards stubbornness? Is it going to go towards um, obs obsessiveness, intensity, over intensity? Is it going to go towards, for example, being a renaissance person where you have training and knowledge of so many diverse areas? Or is it going to go towards being a mediator person or like a team maker who pulls many different types of people together? Or is it going to go towards being a multiculturalist? Which direction is it going to go in? Of course, it's going to have some aspects of all of these, but which ones are going to be the key ones in a person? We don't know this until we read the rest of the chart. And how are we going to figure it out by the principle of resonance, by the rule of resonance, you can figure out what the contextual item is going to produce. What kind of sound is this guitar going to make depends on how you tune it, and it also very certainly depends on what kind of notes you play. So we've tuned this sitar by setting the ascendant nakshatra. Now when you play a note on it, how does that note interact with the background tuning? It's going, to, it's going to tell you what part of this tuning comes out and becomes real. So, where do you go next? My process, the way that I recommend, is next to go to the moon nakshatra. The ascendant nakshatra is the biggest contextual element. The next item is going to be the moon nakshatra. So here's how I describe Rohini, my moon nakshatra in my chart, right? Rohini, the rosy lady. It's symbolized by a bountiful cart. It's also enduring. You see, now that's your first flash of light. You know, you get a light, light bulb above your head. This is the first light bulb above the head. The ascendant nakshatra was enduring. The moon nakshatra is enduring. That's resonance. <laughs> So what's going to come out really strongly, as, as the background nature of my chart, is endurance, tenacity, not giving up. So far, the only two things that we've combined, they're both saying enduring. Rohini is an enduring nakshatra, Uttarashada is an enduring nakshatra. If you have such a situation in your chart, then it's, that's one easy point to focus on. The rest of everything about Rohini is that she, is she's a nakshatra of fertility, creativity, intelligence, rep, uh, reproduction, create, creation. She's creative, enduring nakshatra, like, like Brahma. The divinity here is Ka or Brahma. Brahma as the Prajapati is Ka, the god of reproduction, or Ka as Brahma is the creator. He creates the universe and it lasts for 311 trillion years according to the Puranic timescales. So that's very Dhruva. It lasts for a very, very long time, this new thing that he created. So how does that take the background of Uttarashada? It says, okay, this is not, it's not so much of uh, this is a team manager, but this is a Renaissance person. Because Rohini is creative intellect. And Uttarashad is bringing together many diverse assets and talents. So it's going to focus on the talent part. Because Rohini is a talented nakshatra. And Uttarashad has that potential to bring together many talents. So when you have both of them, 
together in the chart. One is the moon nakshatra and one is the ascendant nakshatra. Then the outcome of this chart is going to be the potential of Uttarasha that matches with the potential of Rohini. See, when things resonate, they match. So in this case, in the case of my chart, you'll say your, your interpretation should be he has many different talents that he can bring together on any project. So can create things that endure for a long time, or maintain people's interest for a long time. You can say other wonderful things about me too, if you want, from doing the combination of Rohini and Uttarasha. You can practice if you like. You give it a shot. Let me know in your comments what you, what you can put together from knowing that the Ascendant Nakshatra is Uttarashad and the Moon Nakshatra is Rohini, and wh what resonates between the two of them. There's a few things. See if you can sleuth them out. Let me know in the comments. And then, of course, even more interesting, do the same for your chart. Okay, in the next episode, we'll go further into how to keep tuning the background of the chart with the other principles. And meanwhile, go over to vicdecara.com slash r2 if you want to pick up your own chart so you can follow along with this video series using your own data instead of just my data.